Good afternoon. On this video, I'm going to continue with the second part on uh, dispensational salvation, dealing with the work uh, of Ruckman, Ruckmanism and Ruckus by Gene Kemp. And I'm going to deal with the section here. This is section 8, which is a, an extensive chapter on the dispensational salvation. And I'm going to go to uh, uh, number 5 here, Abraham and Justification, which really deals with the uh, uh, crucial question of James chapter 2, which has been a uh, theological battleground. Uh, for centuries, and uh, people just can't understand what the word justification means in James 2 and what James 2 is referring to. And uh, we'll see that even uh, uh, the, uh, those students of Ruckman misunderstand or don't, uh, don't really see what Ruckman has said in contradiction to some other things he said about uh, this, this passage. So he says here in uh, page 138, Knox uses Roman, now he's really uh, discussing, uh, directing uh, uh, his comments directly to James Knox and his work on Old Testament salvation. Uh, it's in this book, The Law Rightly Dividing the Word Considered. You can get this from his website. And um, so he says here, Knox uses Romans 4 to prove that Abraham was saved by faith alone without works. Romans 4.4 4 shows Abraham uh, was imputed righteousness. The problem was that uh, the, uh, was, was that thought, though, let's get misspelling here, is Abraham uh, is, it was imputed righteousness by faith from believing uh, in the stars of his seed, uh, then was justified years later by works from offering Isaac. This idea is entirely contrary to how Christians are justified. We Christians are, were justified by faith alone at the same time we received the imputed righteousness from believing in Christ. Okay, now that's absolutely true. But so was Abraham. Abraham was saved at the moment he believed in the, uh, at the, uh, that promise. And uh, because he received imputed righteousness, then he was justified. You can't be saved, saved without being justified. Uh, and so you have to have that imputation of uh, righteousness uh, to uh, get saved, and then the justification happens. Now, of course, we know that uh, uh, Abraham didn't go to uh, the third heaven. Uh, that had to wait, so this is all in credit, until the cross could be completed. But nevertheless, he was saved at that moment uh, with that imputation of, uh, of righteousness. And then the, uh, uh, James 2 is talking about a justification, a different justification. Here's the issue. It's a different type of justification uh, Romans is told, Paul is talking about uh, justification for God, and uh, ju uh, and uh, uh, James too is talking about justification for men, and that's what Knox is pointing out. He goes on here on page 140. Knox attempts to cover up the justification of Abraham by excu by excusing uh, excusing that the justification of works in James 2:21-24 20, is referring to declared righteousness, a uh, righteous uh, by those who observe his good works not receiving salvation, because uh, James 2 is not speaking about salvation. He defends his interpretation by saying that Jesus, <coughs> excuse me, uh, he defends his interpretation by saying that Jesus and God were both justified as well. Knox uses the verses of Psalm 51.4, Luke 7.29, and 1 Timothy 3.16 to prove justification cannot mean salvation. Otherwise, you would have to believe Jesus and, and God are, uh, are getting saved from hell. Now, See, there's a little misstatement uh, there uh, by, on the part of Kim. What, uh, what he's saying there is not that uh, uh, justification cannot mean salvation. It, cannot, it can mean, it can mean uh, 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 something else before men. It can mean being justified before men, not that it can't mean just uh, salvation. So uh, uh, he's saying there that uh, he's not saying justification can only mean one thing. He's saying, in fact, the opposite that justification has two different meanings based on the context. And Paul is speaking about justification before God, which is eternal salvation. James is speaking of justification before men, which is proof of one's salvation before men. Although Knox raised a good point, the problem is that the word justification can have more than one definition. That's exactly his point. Uh, he says that people run to James, too, to prove that, uh, uh, Paul, uh, 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 that uh, Abraham wasn't saved until... He did these. Uh, he, he completed his faith when, in fact, he was saved uh, back in uh, Genesis 15. So, when you're saved, you're justified, and that's that's the point. He was justified before God with the imputed righteousness. Um, 
So he says here then, he goes on, these definitions prove that justification can be for the salvation. Well, of course, <clears throat> they can be for the salvation, and they do in the context when Paul is speaking about it. Moreover, Paul Knox failed to mention that in his discussion of the book of James, that he himself used justification to mean salvation in Romans 4, 1 through 5. Exactly. He's not, he's not denying that. He's saying that those who run to James are ignoring the context of James and saying that the justification uh, is referring uh, to uh, a different type of justification. Knox admitted that the justification in Romans 4, 1 through 5 referred to salvation, but then that did not admit it for James 2, 21 to 24. Why? Because it's a different justification. It's, it says uh, it's referring to justification before men. Uh, and uh, referring to a, the uh, showing that uh, you, you have faith and that, uh, uh, that you are saved. Although justification can mean declared righteous, uh, be, uh, can mean declared righteous by those who observe his uh, whole, whole good works, according to Psalm 51, 4, Luke 7, 29, and 1 Timothy 3, 16. So there's an admission there. It can mean that, and it does mean that in James. The justification of James 2, 21 through 24 is not the same definition because it is referring to salvation. Uh, no, it is not. It's not it's, no one's getting saved in James chapter 2. Uh, it says here that the word him is a prayer. He goes, what does the prophet, my brother, my brethren, though a man uh, say he hath faith and have not worth, can faith save him? Can save him from what? That's the question. This is not talking about eternal salvation. This is talking about the sin unto death and being judged for your sins. If you're a Christian and you're walking in your sins, you'll be judged for your sins. Uh, uh, the word him is a person, a thing. James 2.14 is referring to salvation of a person, not Christian testimony. Again, that's an insertion on his part. The verse is ex explaining that without works, faith cannot save him. No, it's not sort of saying that. It says that the, uh, uh, save, what he's saying, save, it's not talking about eternal salvation, it's save him from what? That's the issue. Uh, and he's making an assumption that's referring to uh, eternal salvation. James 2.17.24 is not about a man telling another person to see his good works in order to show, uh, to prove saving faith, but to reproach a person who thinks he is saved by faith alone and to show the necessity of works for salvation. Uh, no, it's not showing. It says, show me. Show me. If you're going to say you believe, show me. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't believe, you know, uh, you tell me to trust that you have, uh, you have saved. But I can't believe that until I see works. Uh, show you have to show the person works in order as a testimony. Because if you do it, you live in some uh, an opposite way. Your testimony is shot. Uh, this is completely contra contradictory for the Christian, because the Bible says our faith is never made perfect by works, nor do we receive justification by works. Well, we're not saying that. We actually do receive justification by works before men. That's exactly how uh, uh, our testimony is supported uh, by our fruits, uh, and has shown that. Now, uh, it says here, the justification mentioned in James 2 is not referring to declared righteous by those who observe his good works, because salvation is strongly implied by the context of James 2, especially 14. In the context of James 2, 14, the following verses, 7, 19, 17, 19, 20, show that belief or faith is not sufficient for salvation. Also, verse 26 shows that faith and works are necessary. Otherwise, you are dead like a body without a spirit. Now, if you go to uh, first Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 5, uh, 6, what do you see? You see the, the widow who's living in pleasure, and she's dead even though she's alive. That's what a Christian is uh, who's living in sin. Even though he's living physically, he's dead uh, and for intents and purposes uh, because he's not bearing any fruit. Paul even knew that the phrase justified works is not declared righteous uh, by those who observe his good works, but is uh, really reference to, uh, reference to salvation. That's right, in the context of Paul. Paul is speaking about how to be justified before God, not before men. And the entire Bible does not show that the phrase justified by works means declared righteous by those who observe his good works, but is rather referring to salvation. <clears throat> and then he puts in James 2.21 and 2.25 in there along with the, uh, Romans 4.2 and Galatians 2.16. And that's the problem. He doesn't understand there's two types of justification, and that's exactly what, what's, what's, what's been referred to here. James is referring to a justification before men, uh, and Paul is before, he's writing about a justification before God. Uh, <clears throat> that's from studying the context of James 2. The word justified is most correctly referring to salvation rather than declared righteous by those who observe his good works. Clearly, clearly, we can notice the justification mentioned in James 2 is not referring to us in the church age. 
It was actually referring to the 12 tribes of Israel during the tribulation. Okay, so that's his, his position on that. Now, again, he's misstating what um, uh, Knox has said about that. Let me read what Ruckman has said. Uh, again, uh, what the, uh, Knox has said is that this justification is two kinds of justification. Uh, in context, there's a justification, justification before God, which refers to salvation, and is, as a result of imputed righteousness <clears throat> at, the, at the point of salvation. That's what Abraham had because he was saved. You can't get saved without being justified. And then James 2 is referring to a justification of before men. And that's how people, other people can see uh, your salvation and uh, know you're saved. That's a testimony. And that's what Paul, uh, uh, Abraham was talking about. Uh, now let's see what, uh, again, what, uh, I mean, that's what uh, uh, Knox was talking about in, in regards to uh, James 2 uh, and the referring to uh, being justified before men and that context. And uh, uh, Ruckman's Theological Dictionary, uh, Theological Studies, Volume 2, this is what Ruckman writes about uh, James, uh, James 2, every unsaved man going to hell likes to quote James, James because James lays the emphasis on works, for he's writing to 12 tribes, and the 12 tribes he's write, writing to have uh, in them thousands of Jews who aren't saved and still under the law, and can't understand the relationship of law to grace and works to grace. So James gives them an illustration of Abraham who is saved by believing what God said by grace through faith. So uh, uh, Ruckman, his, this passage here has him saved in Genesis 15, but was not justified before men, but was not justified before men. He admits here, in Ruckman admits in this passage here, that this justification has to deal before men, not God until he offered up his son, Isaac, seven chapters later. Uh, so that's, uh, there's Ruckman pointing that out in his own theological dictionary. In his work on dispensational truth, uh, he writes here, uh, Adam, Noah, and Abraham were saved by grace through faith, while their works, see Hebrews 7 through 9, showed they had the right kind of faith. See, uh, see James 2.24, it showed their faith and that's what justification uh, referred to, justification before men. It shows their faith. They, want, they didn't get that justification. Uh, 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 at, uh, Abraham didn't get justification uh, uh, later on. Uh, he was justified before God at the moment he, b he believed that promise and was therefore saved at that moment. And justification before men came later. Now, in his uh, notes on this, Ruckman is a bit dis dis disingenuous. Uh, in the note on Genesis 15, uh, he says 15:7. He says, "Notice again the Abrahamic." Uh, let me see here. On uh, 15:6, says uh, this is quoted in Romans and is the alibi for apostate fundamentalists and making Old Testament salvation the same as New Testament salvation. Now, uh, basically, it's the same. We don't say in every detail it's the same. They are not identical. See, that's what we're not saying. We're not. No one's saying they are. Uh, certainly, we're not saying that that it's identical. We understand New Testament salvation is not the same. And in fact, uh, Ruckman tries to put an, put an aspect of New Testament salvation into the Old Testament to prove his his uh, his view of losing uh, one's salvation by talking about losing the filling of uh, the uh, the filling of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the fact is, the matter is, is that not every individual was filled or dwelt by the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament at the point of salvation. That is a New Testament issue. So when we see people, uh, we talk about people losing the Holy Spirit, that had nothing to do with their salvation. It had to do with their relationship uh, with God and the power that God, you know, the, uh, the, the God was using them and, and was giving them certain power. Uh, so you could lose your, your, the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament and not lose your salvation, unlike the New Testament where the indwelling is permanent and, it's, and you're sealed. So he confuses the New Testament aspect with the Old Testament. Uh, they are not identical by any means. No one's saying they're identical. No one's saying they're identical. And so we're saying there's aspects of them that are the same. Faith, uh, uh, faith without works uh, is not to say they're identical. Uh, either before law or under the law. Abraham was never circumcised sp spiritually. True. Abraham did not go to the third heaven when, when he died. True. Abraham's sin was not taken away because all he had, all he had was uh, bulls and, and goats. Uh, uh, the sin was taken away. I mean, the fact is, is that the uh, it wasn't it wasn't permanently taken away, but he was forgiven. 
uh, and that's why he had imputed righteousness. Uh, Abraham did not become a part of the body of Christ because Christ had no body. And it, true. I mean, we don't want to say that he's part of the, of the church. Uh, that would be a covenant view. Abraham's justification took place more than 10 years after righteousness was imputed to him. Now, see, he leaves out what he, he, he noted in, the, in his theological uh, notes, uh, his theological work. Abraham's justification before men, before men took place uh, more than 10 years after the righteousness was imputed to him. Uh, so then he says, compare uh, Genesis 15, 6 with James 2, 21 and 2, 23. So he leaves out that little part is that uh, he had noted in his theological work that the, this justification of James was justification before men, not before God. Then you go to uh, James, and his note on James uh, 2. Uh, and the, let me see here, it's quite long here. James 2. And um, let's see here, what he says here. 2.22, notice that Abraham was justified by works. Verse 21, well, as he, as Buckman has said in his couple, uh, pointed out, he was justified before men, not before God. Uh, so this justification is referring to justification before uh, men. In that, in, in that imputed righteousness received back in Genesis 15.6, and was made perfect, it was completed. Before men, that faith was competed before men. That's the issue. It was perfection, and it was in that relationship that God that, uh, that he had grown in faith. That isn't your faith. Now, now, Luckman switches from the issue of uh, justification to an issue of the faith and the different types of faith or something. And this this is where it gets a little more confusing. That isn't your faith because your faith is complete the moment you receive Christ. Uh, no, you're saved, but your faith still grows. Look at Second Thessalonians one three where Paul commends the Thessalonians for their growing faith. Our faith still must grow. That's why we see all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for proof, for, for instruction, for correction, for correction, instruction, and righteousness, uh, that the man of God may be perfect, uh, though we furnished unto all good works. And so there's always an aspect of growth going on, and that growth comes through faith. No work can complete your faith because your faith is based on the completed work of, of Jesus Christ. So the, this is not about, this is his faith growing, Abraham's faith growing, and being seen by men. That was the aspect of the justification before, before men, that they really could see that he was saved and that he was glorifying God. In the Pauline epistles, your faith is not what needs perfecting. It is you who needs perfecting. Uh, and... Uh, uh, as we quote 2 Timothy 3.17, but how we get perfected is by faith. We, we walk by faith, and our faith grows. That is how perfection, and of course, that's how our, uh, our fruits are seen. But this is an issue of justification uh, by faith, and what does it mean by faith alone? Justification is before God and Paul, and justification uh, by faith, uh, but justification uh, before men in James. Uh, justification be used in two different contexts and that that is exactly what James Knox is speaking about and you see he points out that that justification can be used in that context and he points out those a number of verses that refer to that and uh, that uh, and that's the context that James is using justification uh, that just that uh, Abraham was saved back in Genesis 15 as a as Ruckman himself admitted and, uh, and therefore he was justified and the justification that occurred later on in regards to Isaac, that is referred to in James, uh, is, refer is the issue of a justification before men, not his salvation. Uh, so the reality is, is that the, uh, uh, those who are, are following the Ruckman view on this uh, and actually uh, uh, following a, uh, a contradiction in himself that, uh, because Ruckman himself has admitted uh, that the uh, uh, the justification the justification that occurred in James two was before men, and then later on other notes he simply in his, in his footnotes in his, in his Bible simply leaves out that little detail that when he when he, he talks about it in, in his theological work and uh, in his in his theological in his in his uh, dispensational uh, truth uh, book he says that there were saved men and uh, that that faith showed showed that salvation, not that it, it uh, that they received their salvation at that point, but they were saved men, 
just like a, 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 a Christian in that sense, shows his salvation by his growth, but he's saved at one point in time once he believes without any works of the law, uh, doing anything except believing what God said. Amen. Thank you.